Welcome back to the movie recap. Today's movie will be a 2017 Chinese historical war film titled God of War. So sit back, relax and enjoy the video. The movie takes place in the 16th century along the Chinese shore, where Commander Yu Daiyo of Zhejiang leads thousands of Ming soldiers to charge at the barricades of Japanese pirates or Woku in Sengong. Due to the advantage of archers and gun units in an elevated area, the Ming soldiers were easily outnumbered. You also hit his share of arrows during the battle. As the Woku opens the gate and releases their ronins, you commands them to retreat. After the battle, the general, Master Yamagawa, and the rest of the Japanese soldiers assumed victory that day. One soldier even mocks them for besieging the same day with the same strategies. Back at their place, he tends to his wounds, and the supreme commander of Zhejiang Hu Zongxian introduces him to the assistant regional military commissioner Qi He Guang. He advises you to rest for a while in leading Ming troops and let Qi take over, but you is yet to be impressed by Qi. Currently, Qi leads the Ming army to fight the pirates in Sengong with Lu Nan as his right hand. The soldiers have been observing for days and questioning why Qi is making delays. Then, one rainy night, when the pirates are partying in their station, the soldiers suggest attacking them. Still, Qi states that the move will be predictable. And in the early morning of the next day, Qi decides to launch their ambush on the Japanese because they let their guard down. They can destroy the barricades of the Woku and lessen their number with the help of their fighting skills. The general of the pirates concludes that they must retreat, to which Yamagawa disagrees. Still, the general insists that they cannot afford further casualties. As part of the strategy, you meets the troops of Qi at the time their signal is released. They can demolish and kill plenty of ronins, but abundant numbers of the pirates can escape. They inspect the area and see nothing but fragments of silver left by the pirates. One person who claims to be a captive approaches Qi and tells him that more prisoners need liberation. As they go to the prisoners' cells, you notice one of them has a weapon, so he immediately informs his comrades. Unfortunately, it leads to another conflict between the Ming soldiers of Yu and Qi and the left pirates. The Ming beats them, and so they settle to retreat. After some time, Lu Jiabin of the Imperial Secret Service comes to the battlefield in Sengong. He orders you to be impeached as he failed to seize all the pirates and is accused of colluding with them, and he has no choice but to accept the judgment given to him. A few days pass, and Qi pays a visit to him in his prison cell, and they even have a friendly battle to show their skills in using staff. The next morning, Commander Qi and his wife, Madam Qi, spent their day together in Zim. They have lunch in a diner where some of the Ming soldiers are drunk and start a ruckus, and Qi ends it by giving them a good beating. Later that day, in the plains in the city of Zim, they enjoy playing the game of arm wrestling, where he intentionally lets his wife win. Subsequently, a craftsman introduces his creation to Qi, a mud horse, a piece of equipment made of wood that you can use to skate through the mud. Then, they stop by the village of Yiwu, where they witness the villagers fighting against the residents of Yongkang for the gold and metal ores they can acquire from the mines. According to Zhao Daha, the county magistrate of Yiwu, their place is poor and barren. Their villagers put so much effort into supervising the only place they can gather their riches. Upon seeing and knowing their situation, he immediately reports to Commander Hu. He has decided on which troop of soldiers he wants to train, talking about the Yiwu villagers. He seems amused with the fighting spirit of the villagers there. Hu brings up that there has been a message that Qi badmouthed him. In the report, Qi states that Hu kisses up to Zhao Wenhua, replacing Zhang Jing, and plans to kill him. He reminds him that the walls have ears and he must keep his political opinions to himself as he is not knowledgeable enough, instead, he must focus on leading war strategies. Regardless, he grants Qi his financial needs to train the soldiers of his choice. The next scene shows Qi and his companions in Yiwu village. The residents are in front of the magistrate, explaining that they are invited to join the army. Da Cheng, one of the villagers, seriously refuses the proposal and declares that anyone who agrees will be his enemy. The villagers submit to his response with great trust and respect for him. He adds that they are making them join the army to take over their minds. Afterward, Qi drops by the mines in Yiwu, where he witnesses the men forging their oars. They call for Da Cheng to speak with them and persuade him to join the army. He assures him they will protect them from the Yongkang villagers and their real enemies, the pirates. To end their exchange of dialogues, they decide to settle the decision with a duel, which Qi happily gratifies the request of Da Cheng. They fight with their fists, and eventually, Qi states that he accepts Da Cheng's surrender after he knocks him down, which he disapproves of. They move throughout the mine, Qi dodging every attack. Then, during one of Da Cheng's aggression using a wooden staff, he strikes one of the wooden platforms inside the mine that carries children. If Qi had not supported the broken podium, 
the other men would not have been given the time to assist him, and the children would have fallen onto the fire. The duel is settled, and Da Cheng is now persuaded into joining him and his men in the army alongside his promise to keep the mines protected. In Zen, the soldiers train daily to prepare for battle against the Japanese pirates. They practice using their spears, swords, cannons, and arrows and are reminded to obey the orders of their general. They consistently work out even after seasons change. Master Yamagawa and the general led their war strategies in the Japanese soldier's ship. Yamagawa informs them that Kahata's ronins have already set out to Ninghai. He reminisces about their fight in Sengong, saying they should have counterattacked Chi. However, the general ascertained that for them to win, they must deploy ronins in Ninghai to make Chi's troops travel and fight in one day. At the same time, they will engage in Taizhou while they are occupied with Ninghai. Lastly, they will charge them to make Chi choose between defending his land and his family. Meanwhile, Chi and the other commanders also deliberate in their residence. Regarding numbers, they are significantly disadvantaged by having only over 3,000 men compared to the Japanese pirates of 20,000. Who aggressively commands that they must end the threat of the pirates as soon as possible since they are aware that the pirates in Ninghai are yet to make their move. He bravely says that he is willing to take the bait and concludes to lead his new army to Ninghai to strike the enemies there. The following day, they travel to Ninghai, which is connoted as a suicide mission. In Ninghai, the Ronins wait for the Ming army led by Qi. As they observe the army fast approaching, General Kahata commands them to launch an attack. Qi perceives Ronins as not having a count of 20,000 and realizes there can be an ambush, and they have to disperse their men. The Ronins shoot them with cannons, but their shields are impenetrable. They charge quickly at the enemy, unaware of the excavation horizontally guarding the Ming army. The Ronins fall into the pit and lose their position making the Ming soldiers stand on the elevated ground and have the upper hand in dominating the battle. After Kahata ordered them to retreat, over 300 men died from them, while the Ming only had a few soldiers injured. After a while, a messenger tells Qi that there are Japanese soldiers spotted near Bison, according to Hu. He scrutinizes the situation and acknowledges that the real target of the Japanese is Taizhou. Additionally, he claims he is at ease because his wife is Inzen, and he trusts that she will protect the city. Back in Zen, Madame Chi refuses to leave the village. Even though his brother Yang tries to convince her, she is steadfast in her decision to remain. She instructs Xiao Mo to bring her armor. She responds that as the general's wife, she must not abandon the city and defend alongside their people. She departs her home wearing her armor, assembles the army, and leads them on the walls of Zen. Seeing the soldiers unite to prepare their defense, brother Yang accompanies them in their preparation, changing his mind about leaving them behind. A messenger notifies Chi about the Japanese soldiers in Huajie, four miles outside the city. This strengthens his deduction that the enemies are after Taizhou, so they advance to Hua Street later that day. The Japanese general claims that Chi finally bites the trap and is about to fall into it. From afar, they observe the Ming soldiers and their newly equipped weapons. The general orders that Oda's troops encircle the Ming army and use long bamboo poles to counter their shields. As the Ming soldiers are cornered and shot by marksmen from roofs, Chi has to climb up to one of the roofs to better understand where the commanders are. A runner briefs Master Yamagawa and the other commanders that Chi's troops are making their way through the alleys toward them. Knowing this, the general plans to drive them back to the main street so they can encircle them again. On the other hand, Yamagawa suggests that their gun units must not remain on the rear side, but the general condemns it. He reminds him and Kahata not to underestimate their duty. Some runners report to the general until some of the Ming soldiers are discovered near Shi Lane while some are fighting Kanashida's men in the market. Moreover, some were situated near the shrine, thus, the Ming troops were widespread. One of the commanders directs them to take them down. After a few seconds, the Ming soldiers fast approach the general's area, and Qi faces him. The soldiers then move in a position to defend themselves against the assaults of the Ming troops. Meanwhile, Kahata says that everyone else is contributing to the battle aside from them. He expresses that he thought it was Yamagawa that must be conducting the war. Yamagawa questions not leading their campaign and repeats his point of deploying the gun units in front. Kahata agrees with him and says that the general only protects him because his father could blame him if anything happens. He convinces him to join their forces to instantly take out the Ming army. Finally, he says he wants revenge, and Yamagawa desires a well-established reputation. Despite being told to protect the rear, the two decide to proceed with their plan. The general is confused about what Yamagawa is trying to do as he leads his gun units in the vanguard and confronts Chi's soldiers. They fire at Chi, and smoke immediately covers the battlefield. Chi's men are taken down, ending up with them losing their position. Later, Kahata's ronins are about to launch their attack, 
Fortunately, Chi's cannon soldiers are just at the right time for backup. They fire their cannons at the Ronins, dismantling them, but are also unfortunate and unable to evade the cannons. At the same time, Inzan, Madame Chi governs her people in maintaining their defenses. Some pirates can climb up the walls, but Madame Chi can defend herself against them. Later, the pirates finally blow the gates, so the Ming soldiers immediately block the entrance from the inside and trap them with explosives. However, more pirates enter the walls and the gates while killing many residents of Zen, including women. In their relief, some of the Ming army return to support them, providing motivation and morale to the people. However, Brother Yang, still on the walls, is unluckily murdered by one of the pirates. Madame Chi comforts and assures him that the city is safe, and the dispute continues in Zen. As the pirates from Taizhou are escaping from the Ming soldiers, Chi, in the lead, perseveres to follow them to end the fight. The Japanese pirates are making their way to their ship to retreat, confident with their distance. However, the Ming soldiers used mud horses to quickly close the gap between them and the enemy, which they successfully did. They launched their raid on the pirates, forbidding them to escape. Due to the Ming's fast movements, the pirates could not prepare their ships to sail. Meanwhile, the general gives his final order to Master Yamagawa to escape without him. Yamagawa regrets acting on his accord back in Taizhou without respecting the order of the general. He apologizes while the general insists on Yamagawa leave without him. The Ming army invades the ship and exceeds the pirates. They also explode their vessel to ensure that no one escapes. The general commends Chi for creating his army stronger. Despite the gap in their numbers, it seems unbelievable that the Ming is winning the war. The general waits in one of the rooms on the ship while the other Ming soldiers fight, prisoners of war being spared. Chi eventually finds his way to where the general is, where they have an unspoken resolution to end the war between the two commandos. At first strike, the general, a trained samurai, cuts his sword in half. Then, they move throughout the ship, serving as their battlefield. They continue their fight as they move and get to the ship's deck. He then disarms the general, who swiftly changes his weapon to a shorter sword. He disarms him once again, and they proceed to a fist fight. Finally, he corners him and states that he must accept surrender and asks for his name. However, the general refuses to give him an answer. The general moves towards his sword and picks it up. He challenges the Ming soldiers to attack him, but Qi stops them. The general states Qi He Guang as his last words before he stabs himself or the act of committing seppuku. The movie ends with the Ming Empire finally claiming victory, and Zen City is triumphantly defended by Madame Qi. Thank you for watching. Subscribe for more videos like this to help the channel out. Have a nice day.